All right, so more homework. 58. <coughs> Your total factor of this polynomial is x minus 6. And if x minus 6 is a factor, then x is 6. So we're going to synthetically divide that 6 out. Coefficients are 1, negative 10, 19, and 30. And we drop, and we multiply, and we add. We multiply, and we add. We multiply, and we add. Right. So what we've done is we've factored out x minus 6, and we're left with x squared minus 4x minus 5 which factors is x minus 5 and x plus 1. And then I bring down my known factor, x minus 6, and that is the factored version of f of x. x minus 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 6. Moving on to some easier stuff here. It says divide the following using synthetic division. So these are all synthetic divisions. They're not hard. Uh, some of these will have remainders of zero, some of them won't. I don't know why I drew the actual divisor symbol. It's supposed to be upside down, two stories tall. This one's going to require placeholders because there's that zero x that's missing. So minus five, zero, negative two. And if we're dividing by x minus four, then x is four. So we're going to drop the 1, we're going to multiply, and we're going to add, we're going to multiply, and we're going to add, we're going to multiply, and we're going to add. We get negative 18 as a remainder. So it turns out that x cubed minus 5x squared minus 2 divided by x minus 4 is x squared minus x minus 4 take away 18 pieces of x minus 4. Simple enough. This one's also talking about the need of a placeholder. It's got a little hint there. We're dividing by a negative 5 because x is a negative 5. If we jump equality, we think about that being or possibly being a factor. It might be. It might not. There's no x squared, so I need a 0 right there. 16 and negative 35. We drop. We multiply and we add. 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 Now I'm going to scan through and make sure that I did not make any mistakes. Doesn't look like I did. So if we divide x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 16x minus 35 by x plus 5, uh, we're left with x cubed take away x squared plus 5x, take away 9, plus 10 pieces of x plus 5. All right, two more synthetics, and then I get to do long division. So here I'm dividing by x minus 5, which means x is 5. And I drop, and I multiply, and I add. And I multiply, and I add. Here's my remainder, my constant, and my x. So when I divide 2x squared minus 7x plus 10, I am left with 2x plus 3 plus 25 pieces of x minus 5. Not everything's meant to come out as a zero. If you take pre-calculus, you learn that these are the asymptotes of the original function. So it has a use later on. All right, this would mean that x is negative 3, and I do need placeholders because there are no x squareds. I can't make a jump like that. There's a 1, a 0, a negative 4, and a 6. Those are my coefficients. And I drop, and I multiply, and I add. And I multiply, and I add. And I multiply, and I add. Remainder, constant, x, x squared. So what I'm left with is x squared minus 3x plus 5 take away 9 pieces of x plus 3. All right, moving on. The instruction set up here is long division. Long division is long. Not necessarily hard, it's just long division. That's why they call it that. 
This guy's got some jumps happening. We jump straight from x to the fourth to 5x, so I'm going to be including placeholders for x cubed and x squared. I'm going to divide it by x squared minus 3x minus 2. And to turn an x squared into a 4x to the fourth, I have to multiply by 4x squared. And then I invoke what's called the distributive property. I distribute this 4x squared to all three pieces of the dividend. I think that's what it's called. Or just the divisor of the divisor. That'll give me 4x to the fourth. Take away 12x cubed. Minus 8x squared. Now, you're going to subtract this entire line, and that's going to change the signs on everything, and then you can change it to addition. So, 4x to the 4th minus 4x to the 4th is nothing. 0 plus 12 is 12. And 0 plus 8 is 8x squared. Now I'm going to turn 4x squared and 12x cubed by multiplying by... Sorry, I'm going to turn x squared into 12x cubed by multiplying by 12x. So plus 12x, distribute 12x cubed minus 36x squared minus 24x. And I do need to bring down this 5x. I'm going to subtract the entire thing so that changes signs and then I can switch over to addition. So I've got 8 plus 36, which is 44. And then I've got 5 plus 24, which is 29. And I'm going to bring down my minus 4. And this should be the last move I make. It's going to be a rather large number. And multiply by 44, because I want to be a 44x squared. I'm just making sure I didn't make any mistakes. So if I distribute that 44 to all three terms, I'd have a 44x squared minus, what, 132x? Sounds right. And then minus 88. So I wrap and I subtract, which means I change my signs. And I can use addition. Uh, 132 and 29 should make 161x. And then negative 4 plus 88 should be plus 84. And I can't multiply x squared by anything with a positive exponent to become 161x, so I'm done. So this is 4x squared plus 12x plus 44 plus 161x plus 84 pieces of x squared minus 3x minus 2. Kind of an ugly answer. This is long division. It's not supposed to be pretty. All right. 52, more long division. It says you need a placeholder for 0x, zero, zero so you should probably do that. 5x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 0x minus 39. We're dividing by x squared plus 2x minus 4. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to multiply by 5x squared because you want to become 5x to the fourth. So 5x to the fourth plus 10x cubed minus 20x squared. And again, you wrap before you subtract. There are no x to the fourth. I have a negative 2 minus 10. That's negative 12x cubed. And I have a negative 7 plus 20, which is going to be 13x squared. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my 0x. I'll probably need it. Now I need to multiply by a negative 12x to become negative 12x cubed. It'll be minus 24x squared. Minus 48x. Again, I wrap before I subtract. It's going to change all those to positive. 
There will be no x cubes. Looks like there's going to be 20, sorry, 37 x squared and 48 x's. I'll bring down that negative 39. This should be my last one. To turn an x squared into 37 x squared, I multiply by 37. I'll give me 37 x squared plus, what, 74? Seems legit. Plus 74 x. And then on this one, negative 148. I believe that's right. Most kids make mistakes on long division from sign changes. Sign mistakes is where they make their mistakes. So don't be that kid. Oh, what do we got? We got 48 take away 74. What's the difference on that? 26? Sounds right. Negative 26x. And then we got negative 39 plus 148, which is what, 109? That also sounds right. And I'm done, because I, I, mean, I can't turn x squared into x. So, after all this work, I ended up with 5x squared minus 12x, which I could write this morning. Be good for you all, too. Plus 37. Take away... Actually, it'd be safer to write this plus a negative 26x plus 109 pieces of x squared plus 2x minus 4. And that's long division, and there's one left. Then I'll be done with this video for the day. i got to make something else. This is the actual, if you do this in order, this is the easy long division problem. The rest of them are longer. So this one should be shorter. It's x squared plus x minus 17. I know that x minus 4 is not a factor of this thing, so it's not going to have a remainder of 0. You could actually do synthetic division on this one if you wanted to, but it says do long division, so you're going to do long division. We're going to multiply everything by an x to become x squared. So I'd have x squared minus 4x. Wrap before I subtract. I will have 5x. Bring down that 17 minus 17, and one more move, and it's done. Multiply by 5. That'll give me 5x minus 20. And again, I wrap before I subtract. Changes signs. And I'll end up with 3. So x plus 5 plus 3 pieces of x minus 4 is my final answer. I'm going to do one more. The rest of this stuff is like all really easy. So everything before this one is really easy stuff. Doesn't take too long. This is probably the last semi-difficult problem. Rectangular prism has a volume of 40 cubic units. If its length is 2x, its width is x minus 1. And its height is x minus 4. What is the value of x? I don't think this thing works out nicely. It says, by all means, use your graphing calculator. I'm going to play with it for a while and see if I can get anywhere with it, because I've got time to kill. So volume is length, width, height for a prism. I know the volume is 40. The length is twice x. The width is x minus 1. And the height is x minus 4. And again, I'm going to see where this goes, because why not? I just don't remember me making this problem work out nicely. But I could be wrong. If I FOIL out x minus 1 times x minus 4, I have x squared minus, what, 5x plus 4. And then I 2x everything. 40 is 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8x. And then I would set it equal to 0. Which be take away 40, not plus 40. It does factor. How about that? Hmm. I can pull a 2x squared from both of the front pieces. If I do that, I'll have x minus 5. 
and I can pull eight from both pieces. If I do that, I'll have x minus five left over. Doesn't look like an x, does it? Anyways, so I've gone from four terms to two terms. I can use factoring by grouping. Uh, both pieces contain x minus five, and the crap left over, as I like to say, is two x squared plus eight. There is nothing real here. These are all imaginary answers. I hope you understand that. I mean, 2x squared is negative 8. x squared is negative 4. x is plus or minus 2i. Nobody cares about imaginary answers. There's the real answer, that x is 5. And it does say you could have used your graphing calculator. And I'll walk you through that. It's a good way to check my work because, you know, it's Wednesday morning. So you go back to the original equation that was written before you did any math and might have screwed something up. You got twice an x times an x minus 1 times an x minus 4. Zoom 6 it. And to play with the window, the volume was stated to be 40. Right? You know, some kids would be like, oh, there's a maximum. I'll go after that. No, that's not what we're after. We want to know when the volume is 40 because we put a 40 in Y1. So I'm going to set the Y max to about 60. Hit the graph key. And we'll see that intersection happen. It happens right there. Second trace 5 for intersect. Get my little cursor close. And when my cursor is close, I get to press enter three times. And it's 5. I know some kids also struggle with the intersect feature because you have to play with the window. Uh, it's a little more intuitive, but you can also look at that table. So second table. And we're looking for equality. It's right there. When x is 5, y1 and y2 have equality. All right. So some kids like the table. Some kids like the graph. I like to see it. So I like the graph. But you be you, right? You do you. Me do me. Anyways, till the next time I decide to record some crap. Later.